Go see Rogue One. It was fracking awesome. By the way, that was my non-spoiler review. Just came back from seeing Rogue One, and oh my god, this was an incredibly awesome movie. I think everyone pretty much knew what the storyline was going to involve, but we didn't know to what extent. I put spoilers in the title of this video, but I'm still just going to say it one more time. If you haven't seen this movie, I'm about to give major, major spoilers. You've been warned. I admit at the very beginning, I wasn't exactly on board with everything that was happening with the flashback going into Jin's childhood. But I think that's fairly normal. Whenever you bring in new characters into a franchise that's fairly well known, it takes a little bit of time for you to adjust to the new characters. But I really like the feel of this movie. At the very beginning when we didn't get a crawl, I was like, whoa, they're not going to show one. But then it made a whole lot more sense. This isn't part of the main storyline. This is more of a side story for the unsung heroes. Felicity Jones played Jin, the main character, and I liked her acting. I think that she played her character fairly well. She wasn't an overperforming actress, and she's probably not going to be nominated for any major award this coming year, but at the same time, she wasn't underperforming either. I feel like she did the character justice. From reading a few synopsis online, I was worried they were going to try to make Cassie and Andor, who's played by, I believe, Diego Luna, as her love interest, but luckily that did not happen. I mean, they have very caring roles for each other, but I wouldn't go so far as to say it was a romantic interest. My favorite character being introduced was probably Donnie Yen's character, Sherrod. He was like a blind monk. It's like he had the force, but he wasn't a full-on Jedi. And his death, along with the android, who was K2SO, who was played by Alan Tudyk, by the way, those two really had me sad. I mean, I felt legitimately depressed. I think everyone going in knew that the characters were going to end up dying, but still, seeing it on screen made me feel really sad. I was not expecting to see Grand Moff Tarkin in this. Holy crap! The CGI that these guys can do is amazing. I mean, granted, you can tell that this is a computer facsimile, and it's not really Peter Cushing coming back from the dead, although I wouldn't put have passed Disney for having that technology and not sharing it with everyone. And Vader, even though he was only in this briefly, I did like the scenes that he was included in. It's also really nice to see him cut loose. Up to this point, we get to see Darth Vader be a badass in the cartoon and comic books, but when it comes to the big screen, usually he's holding back because his only opponent so far has really just been his son. He's trying really hard not to kill him, so he is going to some extent, but he's not going full force. This movie, he is. At the end of this movie, I got goosebumps. When I saw that it led directly into A New Hope, I was just like, oh my god, these writers are a genius. I'm glad they did this. Although, again, there was a lot of people online that was speculating that this may end up happening, but still, seeing it on screen is a big difference. I'm really glad that this movie was made. There are so many stories that can be done that doesn't center around the central core characters of the Star Wars universe that we all know. I would really like not all of them to die like they did in this movie, but I do understand that that may be a necessity in order to keep the timeline coherent. I feel as though this was the darkest out of all the Star Wars movies to be made, maybe even darker than The Empire Strikes Back, but at least it does end on hope, and for that, I'm also very happy. Obviously, you can tell that the effects are much more advanced in this movie than they were in the 1970s when the original Star Wars came out, but you can also tell that these guys tried their best to make sure that the transition from this movie into A New Hope is very smooth, and I really respect that. Overall, like I said, the movie itself itself was great. I really like the story. I love the characters introduced here, even though we're not going to be able to get to know them anymore after this. But still, I really did enjoy everything overall. There were only two minor things that kind of bugged me about this movie. Nothing big, but one of them was that we didn't get enough Vader. And I know this movie wasn't about him, but still, I would have liked to have seen him cut loose a bit more. In fact, I would have liked to have seen two or three different scenes where he's just kind of mowing down the rebels like they're nothing. The other thing is we got a few scenes in the trailers, which, if anyone else out there watched the trailer several times like I did, there are certain things here and there that did not show up in the movie. And I know this happens all the time. There's all kinds of trailers that are released on movies where we see these scenes and never make it into the movie. It's either going to be released later on on an extended cut, or maybe these scenes were filmed just for the trailer itself. I recommend watching this movie. Even if you're not a huge Star Wars fan, I feel as though even if you know the basic premise, you would like it. So with that, thank you guys for watching me in this video. Be sure to check out my Patreon site when you get a chance, my social media sites, my websites, and everything else out there. Peace, love, namaste, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. When they showed Leia at the very end, I also had a little bit of a giggle inside. I was like, wow, I can't believe they put her on there too. Obviously, again, it was CGI, but still, I liked it.